Hi, and welcome to the Kidney Foundation's Plugged In Show. Have you ever set a physical activity goal for yourself, but it just seems too out of reach to achieve? If so, then we have someone on today's show who just might help inspire you to get started. We caught up with Brenda Dondo as she logged her 100th kilometer in the swimming pool as a participant in the 2019 Kidney March event. Then we're out of the swimming pool and onto the golf course with the dynamic duo of David C. Jones and Sydney the Kidney who were on hand at the Dare to Dream golf tournament and veteran kidney marchers Kate and Sue are back with their top 10 tips for fellow kidney march participants. So don't go away. It's all next right here on Plugged In. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me on this glorious sunny day here in Chilliwack and in fact, I'm in front of the Chilliwack Landing and Leisure Center for a very special reason. And that special reason has to do with the 10th anniversary of the Kidney March. Now the Kidney March celebrating its 10th anniversary. It's the brainchild of the Southern Alberta branch of the Kidney Foundation. And it's an epic event. It's over a three day period where participants walk a hundred kilometers. Yep. I said a hundred kilometers in three days. Now you can imagine that's no easy feat. It takes a lot of endurance. It takes a lot of training. And not everybody can actually be there on that day to participate, but some participants have come up with some pretty unique ways to do that training. Brenda Dondo, who works at the BC Yukon branch, has done just that. She's come up with an ingenious and inspirational way of logging 100 kilometers, and she's doing it in the building right behind me. Now, I have it on good authority that she's going to be hitting 100 kilometers today, so we're going to go in and catch her at the last leg of that training. Stay with us. It's going to be a lot of fun, and you're not going to want to miss this. looking a lot drier than you were a few minutes ago. Thanks for joining us uh, here on Plugged In. Thank you for having me. Well, it's a pleasure, but I got to know, did we surprise you? We ended oh, up yeah. showing up. Yeah, you surprised me. All right. That was pretty interesting to see you walk in. Yes. So the reason we came today was a little birdie told us and we got it on film that you were going to hit the 100 kilometers in the water today. Tell me, how did that feel? That was pretty darn awesome. I knew it was coming up, so I kind of had to figure out timing, what day it was going to be, and I kind of figured it, would, it was going to be today because I only had just over four kilometers to go, and so I was pushing hard today to make sure I made that 100 kilometers. What's behind your motivation to to put in this 100K in the water? Yeah, it was, it was a thought process, but, but a very quick one because when we met with Southern Alberta, I knew that I wanted to do this event. It's, uh, a, it's a big event. It's 100 kilometers on land is pretty taxing on the body. And just because of my arthritis and uh, physical uh, ability, I knew I couldn't do it on land. So, but I knew I could do it in the water because I used to swim all the time. And I'm a swimmer. And so when we were meeting with Southern Alberta in, in the fall of last year, and they were telling us about this, this kidney march that is this epic event, I was on, as they're talking, I'm on my phone trying to figure out how many kilometers or how many laps is that in a pool because I know and I knew I could do this in the pool because of my, my swimming abilities. And so that's what made me get back into the pool, which is what I'm really grateful for. It was a platform for that. And back in the pool, that's an understatement. You've been, you told me you were actually starting back in October. That was the pre-training, is that right? Yes, back in October, after we met with the uh, Southern Alberta branch, um, I knew that I had to start doing something to, before I actually started the, counting the kilometers for the march. So I started back in October. From October to about December, I. I came a couple times a week just to get myself back in the pool because I needed to get myself moving because I wanted to make sure I met my goal of 100 kilometers. 
so uh, yeah, I, I started the pre kind of training back in October, but I didn't actually start the actual counting of my kilometers until January. So, and again, you know, I had to work it up. Like I start off the first day was one kilometer and then the, it just kind of rolled up and I kept pushing myself. So now I'm doing about four kilometers each time I'm in the pool. Okay. So it's, it's like 300 laps. Yeah. Is that a counter that's on your finger? Yeah, it's counter. a lap counter. And what it does is it, every time I hit the wall, whether either way, I push the button and it counts my laps for me because I was counting laps before without it and I was screwing up badly because and this lap counter pr actually proved that. So um, it counts my laps for me. It counts, it, it times how long it takes me to get from one side to the other. Uh, for one way, it takes me anywhere from, from between 24 and 26 seconds. So that's how I know if I'm pushing myself hard enough. And then um, it also times how much, how long I'm in the pool. So I can generally, I generally know for under an hour and probably it's about 50, 45 to 50 minutes, I can do 1.2 kilometers. Wow, so that measurement is pretty exact. Yeah, well, I'm a pretty exact person. <laughs> I have to know because I want to be correct. <laughs> Okay, so you've been in the pool since October. Yep. Actually counting since January. So we're early August now. You've been going seven months along here. I have. I mean, there were some months that I was in the pool more than others, and that's just based on making sure that my head is in the right space. Because if you're, if you're not committed and you're not, if your head is not in the right space, then you tend to make excuses. And there were some months I was making excuses just because. Oh, I can't go because I got to go to work or whatever. But when I was swimming before, I craved coming to the pool and doing my laps. And I wasn't at that point until recently. I cra when I don't go to the pool, I, I'm antsy and I'm jittery because I need to be in the pool because I know that because that's where I want to be. So once you make that commitment, you have that passion to be back doing whatever it is, whether it's walking, swimming, running, hiking, whatever. So I'm at that point now where this isn't the end for me. I'm, just because I've done my 100 kilometers, I'm gonna do more. Um, the, the kidney march is in September, on September 6th through to the 8th. I'm gonna see if I can get another 50 kilometers in there. Can I make it? I don't know, it depends on where my head is at, but I think I'll be, I'll, I'll do fine. Um, well, if anyone can, you're going to be able to do it. Well, I'm determined. Okay. Two more, Sam. Okay. Two more. Okay. We can do this. <laughs> what advice would you give anybody out there that's, well, any of our viewers watching you, they're thinking this is something they might be interested in? Find an activity that you're passionate about. I am passionate about being in the pool. I love being in the pool. I've always been a water baby. I've always swam. I've done competitive swimming when I was a kid. Um, so swimming is my passion. Ask me to walk and I'll, I'll run as far away as I can. Ask me to do anything else and I'll probably run. So find something that's, that you're passionate about. If you love walking, just embrace it. Just get yourself in a headset that this is for a really good cause. This is for those that can't walk or, or don't have the lifestyle that we're, we're fortunate to have. I mean, yes, I'm overweight. Yes, I have arthritis but I'm still pretty darn lucky. I'm still mobile, I'm still out there doing stuff. So, you know what? Find your passion and, and just go for it because you know what? Life is too short. Life is just too darn short to not do something that you're passionate about, whether it's walking, hiking, swimming, uh, playing golf. Just be active because we all know that most people who have kidney disease have diabetes. Diabetes comes from being overweight and lifestyle choices let's let, you can stop that ripple effect by being active so be passionate great advice and well said well I hope you take some time today to enjoy the moment achieving 100 kilometers in the pool is no easy feat so our congratulations thank to you. you Brenda thank you and uh, maybe we'll catch up to you at the 200th kilometer maybe <laughs> thank you thanks
David C. Jones for Talking Kidney, and we are at the Westwood Plateau Golf and Country Club for the Dare to Dream Golf Tournament, benefiting several different wonderful charities, including the Kidney Foundation. You might be asking yourself, how many charities are they actually benefiting here at the Dare to Dream Golf Tournament? I will tell you, it's four. Kendall and Kendall you are one of the major sponsors at the Dare to Dream Golf Tournament and what is the Dare to Dream Golf Tournament and why do you sponsor it? Well for David the past 11 years we've sponsored this tournament to help the local charities in the community. We want to give back to the community uh, so this is our 11th annual we have a great day out here and you know we've over the years we've added a couple more charities. Fantastic including the Kidney Foundation. Including the Kidney Foundation of Canada, BC and the Yukon. Nice and you made Sydney very happy. Yes. All right. He's not doing his happy Oh, he's dance. not doing his happy Oh, no, he's Let's go. Dance. There we go. There we go. Okay. There we go. No, we got there it. Go. There we go. There we go. So, uh, we're here with Fraser Mahullen, and uh, he's one of the uh, commissioners with the golf tournament. And I am going to ask you a trivia question. Since you're, you know, you're a commissioner, right. you should know a lot about golf. I should. Sidney might be able to give you a hint. He might not be able to. All right. So, just, here's your question. Simple question. Only two sports have ever been played on the moon. One of them is golf. Yeah. What was the other sport played on the moon? You got three possible answers. Was it A, baseball, B, frisbee, or C, javelin? I'm gonna say frisbee. Frisbee is incorrect. Oh, oh you are not. Shot. Yeah, no, it's javelin. It was. Javelin. Oh. So you can't play golf. You'll have to go home. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Thank you for playing that. Have a day. Uh, so this is Karen, and Karen is with uh, Woody's Pub, which is one of the sponsors of the Dare to Dream Golf Tournament. Well, I'm going to ask you now a trivia question to see how good a golfer you really are, because it's one thing to be able to play the game, it's another thing to know the game. Do you think you're up to it? It's go I've got multiple choice answers. Sure, let's do it. Okay, here is your question. Here it is. How many pimples does a regular golf ball have? Is it 336, B, 17, or C, 0? Obviously A. A is incorrect because it was a trick question. Golf balls don't have pimples, they have dimples. Ah! Oh. oh. <laughs> He's on the goal, too. Yay! <laughs> All right, here is your trivia question. Okay. What is the diameter of a standard golf ball? There are three possible answers. Is it one, this is diameter, of course. Diameter. 2.5 inches. Uh, uh, two, one inch, the dimples create the illusion that the ball is bigger than it actually is. Or C, 4.25. One inch. One inch is incorrect. I am sorry. The dimples do not create that illusion. It is 4.25 inches in diameter. Oh boy. Yeah. I should have known. All right. We are here with Austin, Nevea, and Rylan, and we are going to ask them some trivia about golf. Uh, you've been golfing for a while. You are just assuming a little bit less time. Uh, so, but let's see how much you really know about golf. These are questions written by Sydney the Kidney. Okay. Here is your first question for you, Austin. What is significant about Kobe Orr when he got a hole? Hole in one in 1975 in Littleton, Colorado. Was it A, he was blind, B, he was blonde, or C, he was only five years old? He was only five years old. You are correct! Wow! Are, are you a big Kobe Orr fan? Did you know that already? Or is that you're just smart? You were able to figure that out? Yeah, I've never heard of him. Just never heard of him? Well, you've heard of him now. Yeah. All right, Nevea, here is your question. Golf balls were originally made from A, snakeskin. B, thin leather stuffed with feathers, or C, parchment and shoe wax? Thin leather stuffed with feathers. You are correct! You are so smart! You, okay, Rylan, here's your question. How many pimples does a regulation golf ball have? Is it 336, that's A, B, 17, or C, zero? 
Golf balls don't have pimples, they have dimples. You got it right! You got, okay, okay, very, you were one of the first people to get the trick right. You were right, absolutely right. There are no pimples on a golf ball, only dimples. You guys are clearly all golf geniuses, and I hope you score many holes in one today, or at least one. Good luck. Good luck to all of you, and thank you so much for helping support different charities. This is wonderful, and the Kidney Foundation. I'm Kate for Did You Know? Did you know that you could walk 100 kilometers in three days and make the biggest difference you've ever made in your life? You can if you join the Kidney Foundation's Kidney March event taking place September 6th to 8th this year. The Kidney March route stretches from Kananaskis country to Calgary. I'm part of a 20-member BC and Yukon team made up of staff, board members, patients, doctors, nurses, social workers, kidney family and friends and we're all walking shoulder to shoulder in a breathtaking adventure from the foothills of Rocky Mountain to Calgary. How do you get involved? Register at kidneymarch.ca. Raise a minimum of $2,200 for the fight against kidney disease. You'll sleep in a magical tent city and every need from transportation of your luggage to meals, showers, snacks and a cozy place to sleep is taken care of for you. And bonus, you'll meet some of the most inspiring people on the planet. Most participants in the Kidney March are people drawn together because they're personally dealing with kidney disease, they have a loved one who is, they've lost a loved one, or they just want to do something meaningful. You've never done something like this before. You're not alone. Most participants kidney and Kidney March have never done anything like this before. I know I hadn't before I signed up for my first time. That was seven years ago, and in September, I'll walk for the sixth year. I walked because I was diagnosed with kidney disease in 2011. I was lucky to receive a kidney transplant in 2017 from an incredible man, my husband Brian. He gave me a second chance of life that we share together, but I continue to participate in the Kidney March each year because I continue to fight against kidney disease. The Kidney March is very special to me because I share my journey each year with my mom who's walked alongside me every step of the way. This is my mom and Kidney March partner in crime, Sue Huffman. Since mom always knows best, I've asked her to help me share our Kidney March top 10 tips with you. Thanks Kate, you're right. Over the years, we've learned a thing or two that we'd like to share with you. 10! Invest in a good pair of running shoes and those double layer socks and bring some spares in case of a rainy day. Absolutely. Nine. And make sure you break those in for training for the Kidney March. Because let me tell you, you do not want to get blisters, especially on day one. Eight. Doesn't matter how smelly your shoes are after the 35 kilometers, make sure you put your shoes inside the tent at night. I bring along some dryer sheets. Also, we've found that putting our clothes in the bottom of our sleeping bag at night keeps them warm and dry. Think about it! Seven! Bring a pair of sandals or flip-flops. You'll want to switch out of those really smelly and tired runners and something a little bit more comfortable and pamper those feet as you go through camp throughout the evening. Six! Speaking of pampering, do not have a pedicure in the two months before the march. You need to build up those calluses. Yeah, that's sad. But we'll live. Five! Layer up. Plan for all possible weather scenarios. It can start off pretty chilly those mornings, but sometimes if the weather's good, it will get nice and warm. So bring a hat, sunscreen, and just in case, some rain gear. At pit stops, you can put that extra gear in bags, and they'll take that back to camp for you. And you can pick it up at the end of the night, which is a really great help. Four! If you're not a morning person like myself, I would suggest you organize that day bag the night before as those mornings are early and you want to be not rushing to get to the start or the pickup spot. Absolutely. Three! Keep lunch breaks en route to a maximum of 30 minutes. I think our first year we did a whole hour. Mm. And let me tell you, your muscles start to seize up on you. So make sure you keep it down to 30 minutes maximum. Two! When coming up to pit stops, Kate and I have found that if we make a game plan, we're more efficient. Who needs to use the washroom? Doing some stretching is critical, but who's gonna fill up the water bottle? Who will grab the snacks? And off we go for the next route. The snacks are essential, let me tell ya. One! Check out kidneymarch.ca in the Kidney March training Facebook page for great walking and fundraising tips. And don't forget, you can register there too. 
I've loved every moment sharing this journey with Kate for the last five years, and I'm looking forward to doing it again this year. The whole event is fantastic. Challenge yourself, but don't get hung up if you don't do all 100 kilometers. But do enjoy the lovely scenery, connecting with the other walkers, and most of all, have fun. Like I said before, Mom always knows best. Thanks for joining us for Did You Know? We, we hope to see you at the 10th, 10th anniversary of the Kidney, Kidney March. March. Think, Think about, about it. it. <laughs> I'm here with Heath. This is the Dare to Dream Golf Tournament. When you were a little kid, what did you dare to dream? What did you want to be when you grew up? A uh, professional hockey player, for sure. Fantastic. Okay, I am here with Kelly at the Dare to Dream Golf Tournament. And I want to know, Kelly, what did you dare to dream? What did you want to be when you were a little kid? I want to be a firefighter. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm here with Bill. And Bill, what did you dare to dream when you were a little kid? Uh, playing the NHL. Toronto Maple Leafs, to be exact. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm here with Aaron, and Aaron, what did you dare to dream when you were a little kid? What did you want to be? Uh, excavator operator. Interesting choice. We're at the Dare to Dream Golf Tournament, benefiting local kids uh, with their dreams. What did you dare to dream when you were a little kid? I wanted to be a singer. I got the kidney blues and it ain't great. I'm waiting for someone to donate. I've got the kidney blues and I'm feeling sad. I need some help. Casey, what did you dare to dream when you were a little kid? I wanted to be a hockey player. Interesting, very popular choice. Fantastic, and how about you? A uh, baseball player. Nice, oh nice. <laughs> fun, right Sydney? We're here at the Westwood Plateau Golf and Country Club at the Dare to Dream Golf Tournament. It's been so much fun. You've had so much sugar. You're a little bit wired, but now we are calling it the end of the day here in this beautiful, beautiful setting in Coquitlam. So we're going to tee off one more time. There you go. I'm Melissa for Community Calendar. Save the date, October 18th. That's the date of the Kidney Foundation's inaugural South Asian Starry Night Benefit. This groundbreaking night, hosted by Robin Gill, BC correspondent, weekend anchor for Global National, will bring together local community stakeholders, political entities, business leaders, the medical and research community, as well as all those impacted by kidney disease. The South Asian Starry Night Benefit will connect communities to convey much needed awareness surrounding kidney disease, risk factors, and organ donation. Did you know, one in 10 Canadians live with kidney disease or are at risk? Most are unaware of this. And you can lose up to 80% of your kidney function before experiencing symptoms. As of December 2018, there were 665 people in BC waiting for a transplant, with 528 of those being kidney patients. Last year, 335 kidney transplants were completed in BC. Sadly, many people in BC pass away before a transplant becomes available to them. Our goal is to reduce this number to zero. The South Asian Starry Night Benefit will include a hosted network cocktail reception, live and silent auction, inspiring speakers, dinner, dancing, entertainment, and a special fashion show sponsored by Drishti Magazine. Tickets are $125 per person, or $1,100 for a table of 10, and $1,450 for a corporate or VIP table. Limited sponsorship opportunities are also available. So don't wait, get your tickets now. For more information on this exciting evening or to purchase your tickets, please visit the information on your screen. 
The Kidney Foundation is a national volunteer organization. Our volunteers are the backbone of the organization, and it is because of their dedication and hard work that we are able to achieve the mission of the Kidney Foundation, which is to support persons living with kidney disease and their families. Are you interested in volunteering in your community? If so, we'd love to hear from you. Please contact Janine, Volunteer Manager at the BC and Yukon branch of the Kidney Foundation for more information on how you can get involved. If you know of something happening in your local kidney community, we want to know. Send us an email at pluggedin.bcy at kidney.ca and tell us about your community event or fundraiser and we'll include it on an upcoming segment of Community Calendar. We hope to hear from you. I'm Melissa and I'll see you next time on Community Calendar. Hey honey, I lost the list for Jason's birthday thing. Obviously hamburger, cakes. <laughs> no, not hamburger cakes. Hamburgers and cake. <laughs> <laughs> and buns, uh, sausage. Talking. Ooh, eye candy. Is it a full moon tonight? People are being weird. And uh, don't forget to make the Facebook event private this time. Okay. Can you imagine losing most of something without realizing it? Over time, kidney disease can destroy up to 80% of kidney function before you notice any symptoms. Talk to your family doctor to see if you're at risk and need to be screened. It could save your life. Solid seconds of yeah. your feet, so. <laughs> Moment. Achieving 100 kilometers in the pool is. A